here with Madonna guy Gilbert O'Sullivan. I'll get slapped in a minute. <laughs> what's in a kiss? Yes, what's in a kiss? Let's get back to those gut issues. Yeah, like turmeric. Yeah. So when when you're sort of working with the gut, it once again it takes looking at all of the symptoms and the history to sort of find out what we need to do. Now, when people come in with gut issues, quite often they have already been to the allergy specialist and they've had prick tests and, you know, the sort of scratch tests that people do. And quite often they've just hit that spot where nothing has shown up that's any use. So they've already been Googling a lot. They've already been looking for the answers. And quite often people come in with a bag of stuff that they've bought online or bought at the chemist. Once again, a lot of the things is about dose. So if I say uh, that someone needs, say, glutamine for the gut, glutamine was one of the core things you need to heal the gut. So basically the cell cells in the gut, glutamine creates most of that layer. But then you need things like vitamins A and D to keep the gut nice and elastic. Like a and, protective layer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then every time we do painkillers and antibiotics, we tend to shrink our villi in the intestines. And there's a specific strain of probiotic called LGG. And that's one that's known to regrow that villi. So you can imagine it's a bit of a multifactorial thing. That's that's just looking at the gut lining. That's not talking about breaking down the biofilm, killing the infections, boosting the good gut. Uh, you know, you, you sort of, could not print enough books about these subjects. Oh, it's it it's really endless. it is, and everyone's different. And it's so changing every day. Too. It really is. The research coming out is fantastic. So, for example, the microbiome that is the stuff that we get from our mother. So it's why. And we carry that in our bodies till the day we die. Absolutely. And we've got layers of microbiome in like the um, sinus cavities. We've got it in, you know, all through the digestive tract. We've got a different microbiome in our oral cavities to our gut to, and different layers of the gut, you know, the stomach, small intestine, large intestine. So, but from the moment we're born, we're set with 60 to 70% of that. And the research is coming out saying that the more medical intervention during the pregnancy and during the breastfeeding, They're the worse the microbiome is for the children as they get older. So it's just one of those things where I think it's good for people to realise that first thousand days of a person's life, you know, that's really important timing to get the probiotics into kids. And it's not just when they have antibiotics. You know, I think that's a real misconception. So going back five, ten years ago, if we took antibiotics, people would wait until the antibiotics were finished and then they would take probiotics yeah, afterwards. Yeah. We were always told you must complete the full course. Yes. And now that's been turned on its head. Yeah, think. because of antibiotic resistance. Mm. Yeah, that's right. So they're finding that that isn't actually any more beneficial taking the full course, but the damage that we're doing to ourselves seems to be bigger the longer we take the anti, you know, if we're not doing something to repair it afterwards. I'm trying to think what I read about the other day, again, medically, um, the research is phenomenal what's going on out there. But um, there's, oh, a platypus. They're um, taking something out of the platypus, which could, the superbugs that exist in hospitals, Yes. Um, very difficult to beat. You can lose a leg yeah. because of them. Yeah. Um, there's something in the platypus, some enzyme, that they believe could kill off these superbugs. <laughs> How cool it's, it's is that? Amazing. I mean, platypuses are poor, amazing, aren't poor they? Poor little things they are. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I've never seen one in, in the wild. No, I can't say I have either. But, you know, there are actually herbs that are known to kill, because when we're talking about those superbugs, we're looking at things like staph and strep and that sort of thing. There are actually herbs that kill those in big enough doses. So, for example, golden seal, you know, it's a herb that's been around for thousands of years. It is very well known to kill staph on contact. And what about my favourite product, Manuka honey? Manuka. It's the fabulous. Good the good quality Absolutely. stuff. Absolutely. The, the low-level stuff. Yeah. It's got to have a certain level MG, is it? They yeah, well, it can't be homogenised and pasteurised either. I know that seems like a silly thing to say about honey, but honey needs to be organic to have all the therapeutic benefits in it. Straight from the beehive. It really does. So as long as it's organic manuka honey, that's amazing, an amazing antibiotic. Yeah, I, I take a little teaspoon of it, oh, once every two weeks. Yep. Just yep. for that good gut feeling. Oh, and it's yummy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we'll be back in a minute chatting with Madonna Guy right here at 